Hello and welcome to another video. We're looking at graphing with calculators. It pretty much parallels the same thing we do with paper. First of all, we have to put in an equation. Then we have to select which variable we want to have as the independent variable. And then we need to select the range and resolution for that variable. That is, uh, what is the value we start with, what is the value we end with, and how many points are we going to plot. The more points we plot, the more accurate it will be. Then we need to draw some axes. We need to draw axes that will be able to support the range of the independent variable and the calculated value of the function for those values. So... After we've done that, we can plot the points on the graph and then finally we can connect them all up in a nice smooth line. So you see that procedure done there nicely for you on our two HP 50G calculators. So the next thing we do, the next step is to go to the equation editor. Now we have to hold down the left shift button so as to get, that's the, the white shift button so as to be able to get the Y because if we don't hold it down while we touch the Y, we'll get something else. So once we've done that, up will pop the plot function menu. And then we select add to add a new function and up comes our equation editor, equation writer. So our equation writer comes up, as you see, it's Y3 there, because the other two have been used already. But then we are going to put it in. Now, if you want to make a fresh start and get rid of the other equations, you can... Press the next to shift the bottom soft menus and press clear and answer yes. Now notice that is in brown because that is a soft menu. The soft menus are the ones there at the bottom of the screen. But unfortunately, even if we clear it out, it's not going to purge the y variables from the directory so if we've got y3 there after we've cleared it out and we start we'll see y4 so if we want to start from y1 again we have to purge all the y variables out of the directory so that we can start with a clean slate now the next step is to holding down the left shift button, press the 2D, 3D key, which is F4 on the left. Now we don't normally have to make any changes to the screen at all. We wanna make sure that the angle mode is radiance. This is what messes up a lot of people. So if you have to move around the cursor and choose and select that, you must have your angle unit there of radians on the right, or the graph is not gonna look what it's supposed to look. So we're only dealing with function, plots of function types, so we don't let change that. What we see under there on EQ is actually two equations, we get a list with as many equations as we have over in the equation at y equals that we looked at in the last screen. So basically there's nothing much to do on this at all because we're showing here that our independent variable is x, the connect the points are going to be connected. We're going to go with pixels. We can plot all two simultaneously. And ten having a tick mark every 10 pixels works out convenient in the default screen. Because as I showed you before, 
it means that the tick points occur at unit values of the axes. Although that's not going to happen in this particular um, plot that we're going to do at the end. But it will happen that the tick marks coincide with the unit values as long as you leave the next screen on the right, which is the plot window screen, set to its defaults, which are minus 6.5 to 6.5 in the horizontal view and minus 3.9 to 4 in the vertical view. And our independent variable is going to go from the low value to the high value of the horizontal view. And the default is going to step. So, for the purposes of just drawing those two screens that we saw, the cosine and an x cubed, all we do is just press erase, which is the first thing, and then just press draw. So in the plot window screen, we press erase and draw. And lo and behold, we get, it draws the two, the two functions, the x cubed and the cosine. Now, we're going to press the function menu highlighted in blue on the left, which is going to bring up the menu, the soft menus on the right. And we're going to press the intersection button. So we change the menus at the bottom by selecting a menu and it opens another set of menus. And then we do the intersection button. And that marks the intersection of the two graphs, the one point where the two graphs intersect, with a high degree of precision, as you can see there. Leaving the cursor on the, the point of the intersection and pressing the XY coordinate button shows us that X is 0.9, and y is 0.6, which is basically what we have there in the intersection on the left when we use 4 5 rounding on it. So the xy button will give us a very rough value as we move the cursor around, but to get a really exact intersection of those two graphs with a high degree of accuracy we need to use the intersection function. Now I just wanted to show you what I was saying before, that in that default graph, when we move the cursor around, the tick marks coincide with unit values. So we've got x is 1 and y is minus 2. And those are reported when we have pressed the XY key and we actually move the cursor around. Now we're going to graph the function that we got for the serial RLC circuit in a previous video. So this is typical of our functions, our second order differential equations. When we have complex roots, we spend a lot of time doing that in the video. We're not going to go over that again. But we're going to enter that equation that you see there, which was the answer for the video. And we're going to enter that as the equation that we have to going to use for plotting. So we just put in those keys just like that. Remembering that when we write the x without the square around it, that is not alpha x, but the actual independent variable x. There is a key mark x on the keyboard. That's the one we have to use because that's not, that will let the calculator know that that's the independent variable. And the x that's contained inside the box, that's just a standard multiply. All right, so having put in what we saw there, we've got the function into it. We press enter 
when we press enter, the function actually gets posted to the graphics window. But we still have to set our axis and draw it manually. So we press next and OK to get out of that. Then we hold down the left shift and press the window button to get to our plot window values. And we just change the horizontal view and the vertical view so that the axis read from 0 to 1 and from minus 1 to 5 on the vertical view. That's necessary because our horizontal view is plotting from 0 to 1 second and our voltage is dropping from 5 volts down to 0. But because of the cosine and sine term, it goes, beyond, it goes a little bit beyond the 0 and swings negative and then comes back, which is what you would expect when you have a damped oscillation. So having set up the H view um, and vertical view uh, axis range, we know the axis range from having experimented with the function on just a you know a, just around zero and find out when it goes to zero. We know it will eventually go to zero. So we find those two points, which gives us the idea of the range. And we see that the whole operation occurs within a second. So we have from 0 to 1 as a single second. And the voltage drops down below 0 and then comes back to 0, as shown there. So when we press erase and draw, we get that graph. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.